we're in the midst of a Dragon Age the Veilguard, so I thought I would show off a early dual wielding rogue build that I am using personally. This is a level 24 build, we have 29 points overall, and I'm going to show you my skill tree, the reasons why, the items and runes I'm using, and then what other party members I use to subsidize all this. So please bear with me, and let me show you how many points we have to spend. Okay, so you can see my skill tree is filled out here. Now in total, we have 29 points that you can see here. And essentially, we want to aim to get to the Duelist Specialization. Now I will show you my path in that we use. If you only have the amount of points you need to get there, which currently is 17 points, but you need to be level 20 to unlock your specialization. So as long as you have 20 points, you can make this build work for you. So let me show you what I am using. We of course start in our rogue core and we want to come down south to Exploding Arrow. Now you could obviously work your way this way and do up through here. However, I'm not a big fan of the parrying functions and I don't want to have a build that relies on that. So we are going to move Exploding Arrow. This is actually very helpful, you'd be surprised. After Exploding Arrow, we come to the passive of Greater Downfall. So while airborne, if you press square or triangle, once you have knocked an enemy or once you're in the air, sorry, you land down on top of them, dealing damage, and it's very useful, especially after a combo. From there, we come into Hurricane of Blaze. This is a very good early skill to have. This works tremendously on AoE enemies, does necrotic damage, and that's going to be a big bulk of the damage we are dealing. Now from here, we're going to take both the passive of Sharpen Edge for 15% extra penetration, and penetration ignores a portion of defense when attacking. Really good way if they have armor or whatever, not only will you knock the armor off, but you can also go through the armor. We also are taking the passive of Staggering Blade, and this gives you a Sword Stagger plus 20%. And Stagger, push the target closer to Stagger State, enabling takedowns. Now this build is all built around necrotic damage, takedowns, and momentum, and you will see. Once you come into here, we're doing Decisive Finale, and it's a Decisive Final Attack after the Heavy Light Attack Chain. Again, really handy ability to have. Coming south, we're going to take passive, decisive finish. So agile attack damage, plus 10%. Charge attack damage, plus 10%. 10% final attack damage. If you have a limited number of points, you could come this way instead. And it's underestimated, where light attack damage versus health is 10% extra, which is phenomenal. We want to take the nodes up here as well. Piercing strike, so it gives us 50% penetration and projectile abilities. So projectile abilities deal 75% more damage versus barrier, which means if an enemy has a barrier, fire an arrow at them and you're doing extra damage. That's how I usually do my rogue. If I see an enemy with a barrier, fire my bow at it first, chip out most of that barrier, and then go in for the kill. Momentous occasion. So generate 25% more momentum from final attacks. This effect is doubled when you have adrenaline. Now, certain classes can give you Adrenaline, I believe um, Davering can give you Adrenaline, and Howden. Momentum is what the Rogue uses to do its abilities. Any way of getting that quicker is needed. I went the wrong way. From there, we're going to take Burst of Speeds, Momentum Generation plus 10%. All ties in very nicely with Momentous Occasion. And Staggering Finale, where Stagger from Final Attacks is 20% extra. Again, Stagger builds up the... Um, Ability to do a devastating final attack, or the, um, oh, what's it called? I've forgotten the name of it now. The, like, finishing move, almost. The, uh, clicking in the R3 button. Now, as an ability, Explosive Daggers, I really like this because it's physical damage, and it applies Sunder, and this really helps doing your combos with certain members of the team. And it's a ranged attack with your daggers, what's really not to like. It's really, really good. From there, we're going to go Traumatize, and that's takedown damage plus 15%, and that's the word I was looking for, takedown damage. So Stagger improves, the, obviously hits the Stagger Bar up. Once their Stagger Bar is full, you can do a takedown. Takedowns do incredible damage. Now, if you are limited on your points, you're going to come up here. However, if you have 29 points at least, from there, we're going to do Swift Death. Gain Quickened after defeating an enemy with a critical hit. And if we go into what this is, Ability cooldowns refresh more quickly, which means if you have momentum, you can do more abilities quicker, more damage, keep building momentum, keep staggering. It's just an endless loop of just death. And then we're going to take the middle node. Critical damage plus 10%. I don't think I need to tell you what that is. Right, from there, we obviously have Traumatize, and I said to go up here. 
So, Slice Strike. Gain 250 health and 10% ultimate by performing a successful takedown. And again, our takedowns build up quicker, we do a takedown, and then we gain health and gain 10% of our ultimate ability. I told you, the loot just goes round and round and you have this incredible self-sustaining build. Now from there, we are going to go to Prima Duration plus 20%. This isn't really what we want, but it's just a necessity because it's on the list. We will be working on this node first, but I want to show you the pathing to take first. And then these are obviously optional after you hit your specialization. After that, you want to take Adrenaline. So, successfully striking targets 10 times without taking any damage grants you Adrenaline, causing your attacks to deal bonus damage. And if you remember, when we have Adrenaline, if we come down to our abilities, whichever one it is around here, Momentous Occasion, 25% more momentum from final attacks. The effect is doubled when you have Adrenaline. Hit Adrenaline, 50% more momentum, therefore more rogue abilities being able to use and more damage output. And obviously, once you have Adrenaline, we come into our specialization. And of course, that is Murder of Crows, an amazing ability, all necrotic themed. And of course, a thousand cuts. This is another great ability, extra necrotic damage, only costs one but a little node of momentum. Awesome. Once you have this, you're going to go into Passive's Blessing Passive, which is necrotic damage 10%. And you can then take the one on the left side too. Charged attacks damage plus 10%. I really like using the triangle charge attack for getting down enemy's armor. It works tremendously. Now, as I said, we are going to be filling out this part of the skill tree too. I left this until after I had my specialization. Um, I took a few little bits and bobs here and there, especially this section here. But if you are going to be respecking, and it's so easy to respec in this game, then once you've got this, work your way up here. Necrotic Fog. Suspended Momentum deals 115 necrotic damage to enemies within 6 meters. And because our abilities are melee based, and enemies in this game tend to swarm together, that's a lot of necrotic damage dealt out. You're going to come up to passives, the blessed. You're going to come to the passive Death's Blessing, which is necrotic damage plus 10%. And we're going to take Greater Armor Mastery. In case you want to use Greater Medium Armor, um, the build I'm using uses Light Armor, but I was using Medium Armor as well. I've just picked a Light Armor that I think kind of works a little better, but yeah, if you want to use Medium Armor, this is worth it. We're going to come straight up here to Poisoned Reply. Perfect Defense grants Necrotic Weapons. Necrotic Weapons deals 25% more damage, so if you are good at parrying, this is going to help you amazingly. You're then going to come up here to Insidious Rot, Maximum Necrosis stacks plus one, and Strike Attacks, or sorry, Strike Abilities deal 100% bonus stagger versus enemies suffering from an affliction, and it's easy to land afflictions in this game. Come back down your note to the Poison Reply, and you're going to get the passive Wrath, Critical Damage plus 10, and follow the note down to the left for Assassination. Strike Attack Abilities now deal a guaranteed critical hit if the enemy has low health, meaning enemies are just even easier to finish off quicker. So that is this build using my nodes. If you want to see the pathing to take, you can see it right here. You need to take a screenshot of that, just leave it. That's what I would do. Now if we come over and we look at our character, this is myself. Now I have transmogged the armor and the helmet because I don't really like these designs. For my abilities, I am using Static Strike. I am using Hurricane of Blades. I am using Explosive Daggers. And I'm using Murder of Crows as my ultimate. So for a sword, Weissop's a whale. Mine is currently a plus four. Obviously the loot in this system is a little difficult, but I'm using this for the light attack damage plus 15%. Because 15% light attack damage, the amount of them you can pop off, that really builds up. And I put a rune on it for plus 10% weapon damage. For your offhand, I'm using the Antivan Rapier because it's necrotic damage. 191 and I put 20% armor damage on it because the further into the game you go, armored enemies do come up pretty often. And as you can see, the upgrades are all necrotic resistance, extra necrotic damage, and critical hits. Whereas in this one, it's 20% more light final attacks damage and stuff like that. For a bow, I'm using the Cryptwood bow, so this is a rare short bow, 189 physical damage, and the upgrades deals 40 added necrotic damage. So again, just really tying into our theme. 20% damage from enemy Southern from Necrosis, and the bow is really easy to use. Obviously, we are going to be using it for the barrier because we have that extra barrier damage. But more importantly, if you target an enemy and just tap R2, at least that is what it is on the controller, you just ping your arrows off really quickly, and it's a nice way of just chipping away at health. 
For a helmet, I'm using Defiant Silence. Really good defense. But, more importantly, 20% critical damage. 25% stagger from critical hits. Again, helping us build up that momentum. Momentum, building up our abilities. Therefore, with all our ties we do, extra takedowns, all that fun stuff. And thanks to Medium Armor Mastery, this works. For armor, I'm using the Striking Misfortune. 76 defense, that's not the highest, but Necrosis damage plus 15%, plus I put a rune on for 20% Necrosis resistance. If we come over here to our runes, I am using a rune that has fire damage, because I just find it really helpful against Darkspawn. I'm using Besiege, which is a light and heavy attack, I'm no longer penalized versus barrier for 20 seconds. This is only really helpful if you have lots of enemies with barrier and you can't really get your bow off, you have the option. And Fortify, you gain invulnerability. The reason I use this is because as a melee based rogue, you do pull aggro really, really easily. This helps you stop taking that damage. Now for your items here, for about I'm using the Tincture Kit, healing of 113 plus 20% healing received. I'm using the Heart of Andraste, plus 20% enhanced damage duration, plus 10% enhanced damage effectiveness, and gain enhanced damage on takedowns, again tying everything together. For a ring, we are using Necrotic Jade. Again, 20% Necrosis damage, 20% damage versus enemies suffering from Necrosis, and I put a rune for 25% momentum generation. And for this ring, I'm using the Paragon's Knuckle, which is 30% damage. Again, just to bulk us up, because we are going to be in the thick of it. Now, you might not have these items exactly based on where you are in the game. To give you some context, I have every companion, and I haven't done any main mission past the final companion recruitment. So you just bear that in mind. But try and take items that give you as close to this stuff as possible would be my honest opinion. There you go, just a little demonstration of how quickly your abilities build up. And there's the barrier. 130, sorry, 1,300 damage to it. And again, we have our abilities here. We could do our spinning blades like that and all sorts. We have our ultimate we can do. It's just an insanely good build to use. So I really hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything you would change or you'd do differently with other items, let us know as well. If you're new and you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Dragon Age Let's Plays. I'm in the midst of one at the moment. You can come join the streams or the episodes and come and join me for even more build guides. And hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.